beginner's excel we're going to go to our start menu and then we will open microsoft excel if you're using microsoft excel 2010 this is the same procedure just allow the program to open excel always opens with a new workbook normally named book one which has three sheets as you can see here at the bottom in the actual interface that you see here at the top we have the ribbon the ribbon includes the home button which carries out basic general tasks for formatting text alignment um, setting up the actual numbers conditional formatting inserting deleting and formatting cells auto sum fill clear sort and filter and find and select We've also got insert which allows you to insert pivot tables pictures charts hyperlinks and additional text boxes and things we then have page layout which allows you to sort out the margins so the theme of your actual spreadsheet the scale to fit sheet options and how you actually arrange your sheets the next one is formulas this includes insert function auto sum recently used and various other functions that you would use doing mathematics We've also got define names formula auditing and calculations we then have data where you can actually import external data into your system either from access web or from text or other sources we also have connections sort and filter data tools and outline next tab is review this allows you to check your spelling and proofreading we've also got um, the ability to add in comments to your actual cells and things like adding locks and passwords to a product we've then got view this allows us to actually look at the spreadsheet in either normal view which it currently is in page layout as you can see this is actually single pages page break preview and I've got a pop-up I just click OK on that and we have custom views and full screen I'll go back to normal we also have show and hide zoom which allows you to actually zoom into your panels and how you also arrange your windows themselves last thing here we've actually got our macros button which allows us to record macros and specialist maths problems and then we also have add-ins and we've got a send to we right I've returned to the home button to actually open our program up um, if we already have a pre-made Excel sheet you would actually go to your office button at the top here and then you can either go to your recent documents and any previous documents that you have been using will actually be listed here or we can actually go to our open file and then actually find the file that we're looking for and in this case I'm just going to go to one of my external drivers open that And here we have an Excel so I'm just going to go to the beginning of this and we actually have an introduction file here now in this there are various items that are actually found within an actual Excel spreadsheet and as you can see we have clip art photographs a pie chart and also we have a 3d conal or column graph these can be changed these are just examples additionally to that we have some text which is actually in a header and then we have some 
textual information here and here and some numerical information here. With any text, the text is auto formatted to sit on the left hand side of the cell and with numbers it's always auto formatted to sit on the right hand of each cell. With this one here I've actually done a merge and centre because it's a heading and within our actual home button we can actually change all of these different things. Next thing we're going to do is looking at inserting data. One thing that you do need to know is that um, the actual cells have references and they start from the vertical which is within the column here and columns are always headed with uh, the alphabet so they normally run from A to Z and then then to AA to ZZ and so on. Down the side we have our rows and these are always shown as numbers so for example if I click on this cell we are now on cell F9. We're going to enter some data now. We have different types of data here. I'm going to start here. I've already partially filled our form and I actually want to put today in which is Monday. And as soon as I've typed it in you'll notice that it will show up in the cell which is reference B4 and it also shows up in the formula bar here at the top. To actually allow the system to accept it, you press the enter key and that will take you to the next level. I'm now going to just put some numbers in. So I've now populated our actual cells here with numbers. One thing that you'll notice is that in cell 4A, when you click on it, you can actually see the actual heading of that area. Now, to actually move that, I can actually click between the A and the B. You'll notice that when I'm actually on a column, it'll have a downward pointing block arrow. And when I move it to between the cell A columns and cell B columns, you'll get a double ended arrow. If you hold your left hand, button down on your mouse and then drag to the right what will happen is you'll be able to actually show that column up Let's just do that a little bit more and there we have it what I'd like you to do is now save this to save this you have a number of options you can either click on this icon here at the top you can go to your office button and click save or you can use a shortcut using control so you hold your control key down and then press the S key for sugar, S for sugar and that will save your document and hopefully you won't actually get what I've got here. Normally you wouldn't get the issue of Excel crashing. If it does um, the new versions of Microsoft especially uh, 2007 and Windows 8 and that's the operating system as well as 2007 Office, 2010 Office, 2013 Office do have an auto recovery system so where I've just had that crash it'll actually go through try and find out what the problem is and then reopen the document so it doesn't actually open it you have to actually open it yourself and there we are, I'm back to my actual item. I'm going to close the side box and we'll go back to our inserting data. So I'm going to reinsert the data and just drag this back so that I can actually see that heading and I'm going to insert some more data. You'll notice that this time it is different from the last lot I entered and I'm going to do control and S again. Now because I'm using a legacy format I will actually get this Excel compatibility checker and this is perfectly okay I'm just going to press continue on this one 
and that has now saved my data. Next going to look at cell formatting. Now cell formatting is when you actually make changes to a cell and add either colour to it, um, you can embolden the text in it, you can colour the numbers in it and things. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this cell here which is A4 and we're actually going to sort out the size of the actual column. Now in the previous sheet I actually showed you the drag method of actually increasing the size of the column. I'm just going to take that back and show you another quick one which is if you get your arrow between the column A and column B and then double click what will happen is you can actually increase the size that way. That is method two. There are two other methods. We can either go to, we can actually go to our format cells here. Do you notice here we've got cell size and you've got row height, auto fit row height, and then we've got column width and auto fit column width. If I click on the auto fit column width, it will make the contents of the cell fit the actual cell itself. So I'll click on that and as you can see it's fitted it nicely. I'm just going to go back again and we go back to our format cells and I just want to look at this one here, column width. Now if I click on that I can actually dictate how big I want that cell to be. So if I make it 20 as you can see it's actually increased the size of that cell to 20 points. It always does it in points because that is the size of the text that you're actually using. Right, now that we've actually altered the size of our actual cell here, I'm just going to look at some of our text options. So on here I've got my chocolate addiction and I'm going to actually increase the size of this font and I'm also going to change the style of the font. So here we actually have our font sets and on this side here it actually says Calibri and if I actually use this drop down arrow I now get a huge list of different fonts that I can actually use for my text and you can use this for any of the cells in the system. I'm just going to choose something that can be read reasonably easily. So I'm going to go for Lucida console. And what you'll notice is that that has actually increased the size of my text there. So I'm going to use the quick method of increasing the column width. And I also want to increase the size of this actual font, so I've got to highlight it again. You can either highlight it in the cell itself, or you can go up to your formula bar here and do it that way. This method here, using the formula bar, is usually the quickest and best. So I'm going to embolden it, and I'm going to underline it, and I'm also going to increase the size to 20. Now, just press enter to accept that and you'll notice that this has actually auto increased the size of my actual column and my row here so I don't have to worry about doing sort of column heights and things but if I want to increase that height a little bit more I can do that and you'll notice that my text is actually sitting at the bottom of the cell. Now if we just go to here where it says alignment you have different options. I can actually sit it at the top here or I can put it in the middle. I'm going to put it in the middle there and once I'm happy with that I just press the enter key to accept. Now the other thing that you'll notice is that in reality my text is just sitting in my cell A1. So I don't want it to do that because what will happen is it won't show up properly. I'm going to actually merge some cells together. So using my control key, I actually need to click on the cells next to it to 
bring these all into one so that I can actually fill my header into that area. Currently I have my cell A1 highlighted. Now I need to incorporate B1, C1 and D1 into this. The simplest method of doing this is holding down the shift key and clicking in each subsequent cell and as you can see they're all highlighted now and all I have to do is go to my alignment button here and choose merge. Now you can merge across merge cells or just merge and centre. In this case I'll merge and centre and as you can see my actual text is now centred vertically as well as horizontally. Now we're going to look at just um, putting some formatting onto the other cells of it that are actually in this spreadsheet. So just go to our day here, I'm going to embolden that and make that font a little bit bigger. And as you can see, it's automatically resizing for me. Um, I'm also going to change that all to caps and I'm going to centre it as well once I've actually accepted it. So if we go here, just centre that up. And on here, what I want to do is change these into another colour. And here we have our actual font colour and I'm going to change that to a blue and the two headers here I'm just going to use my shift key to select both of them and I'm going to make those bold and I want to change those to a darker blue actually we'll go for a green on this one so as you can see formatting your text is quite easy and I will now look at formatting numbers. So back to the same thing again. I'm not actually going to worry about the actual layout at the moment on here. I'm just going to put in some text, numbers rather. So I'm filling out the data on my chart. Now, if for example, I wanted to actually convert these cells into numbers of different types I can actually use my number settings here. I've actually got a drop down box that brings out our actual format cells pop up which we can use or we have an arrow here that allows us to choose different things. So I've got um, this one here that says numbers and if you notice I've now got a decimal point with two zeros behind it. I can actually alter those. These two buttons here allow me to decrease or increase the decimal. So if we see, we can actually increase or remove them completely. I've also got things like currency here. So say for example, if I was actually wanting to look at this as spending per day, rather than the actual items per day. I can actually change it to currency. It is actually default set to UK at the moment. And if I use this little button here, this is my currency and I can actually change to dollars, euros, as well as UK pounds. If I was using any other foreign currency, I can actually go into my format cells pop up and then I can choose any type of foreign coinage that I want that's actually within the Excel system but we'll stick with English at the moment. You also have the option of setting up things like percentages so for example we can actually set these as percentages and again this can also be found here. We've also got fractions. You can change the fraction on them. And you notice that when I use fractions, it actually defaults to the centre. And there are lots of other formats for numbers. So we've got scientific, we have specials, and we also have customs. And custom you can actually set out things like date time and things like that 
and I'm just going to go back to our standard <coughs> number there and decrease my actual decimal points. Again, save your form, your actual spreadsheet using Control and S. So Control and S for sugar. And click Continue. Just going to have a look at Autofill. Autofill is a really handy little device that allows you to actually autofill dates and days, uh, months, etc. So here we actually have Monday in our chart. You'll notice that when you're actually moving over your spreadsheet, you have a white cross which is um, quite thick. Now, if I now click on Monday, notice dependent on where I move the cursor will depend on what it looks like. So if it's on the edge of it, that means that I can actually move the item up and down. And if it was on the side here, so that's a four headed arrow cross. And as you can see, I can move it around like that. Right, but what I'm looking for is a cross going from that big white cross to a thin black cross. Now, if I now use this and drag along, you can actually see that it is auto filling my chart with the days of the week in it. And there we go. So that is auto fill. It's useful if you're actually doing formulas and things like that. And we're going to actually save that. Right, now we're going to look at some basic formulas here. So I'm going to populate with this the actual chocolates with some numbers here. Now, all we want to do is add these up. So what we're going to do is we can actually write in the text that we have here or the numbers that we have here. So we're going to go 4 plus 5 plus 3 plus 5 plus 1. And if we just press the enter key, you notice that nothing actually happens. Now, with any mathematical sum that you do with spreadsheets, you actually have to start it with an equal sign. And that will actually ensure that your items add up all together. So as you can see, the mathematics here, we actually have an equal sign and then the actual numbers from the cells are all added up together and that equals the sum of 18 altogether. So that is the very basic way of doing it and it is a long handed way of doing things and it's not the easiest. So what we would normally do is we'd look at something called auto sum. So I'm just going to go to my auto sum sheet here. I'm going to populate my chocolate bars again with some numbers and we're going to go to the home button and if you look up here you've got something that says editing now we have a button called auto sum we also can find the auto sum in formulas and i'm just going to go to formulas auto sum basically means that it will actually add up a range of values now generally if we're doing an auto sum, we don't actually use the numbers. Now, this is really important. Auto sum actually takes the cell reference, and in this case, it is B5, and it will add or subtract or multiply or divide particular items between them. So, in this case, we're actually going to use auto sum to add up the cells from. B5 through to B9. If I click on that, click auto sum, and as you can see, it's actually highlighted the range. So the range is B5 through to B9 of numbers, and you can actually see in here we've got 
equals sum, it uses parentheses, which is the brackets, b5 through to b9. Using the colon here means that it is a range of numbers. And then if we press enter, it will come up with the same answer on the previous page. Actually, it won't because I put in different numbers. So anyway, but you get the gist of it. And if you actually look up here, you can see that we have got our actual mathematical formula equals sum, parenthesis open, b5 through to b9, close parenthesis. We're going to look at a basic formula called average. Now this is really useful if you actually want to work out the average of something that you are using per day, spending per day, average number of pupils attending school and things like that. So I'm just going to populate my cells again with some numbers and I want the average number of items actually consumed in a day. So I'm going to go to my formula bar here and I'm going to click on recently used. Now here we can actually see that there are various things actually set. So for example we've got average here so I'm actually going to utilize that but before I do that you've also got insert function here. Now if I click on this it comes up with an insert function pop-up and if for example average wasn't actually listed there we would actually go to our all category and we can then actually scroll down through until we actually find average and there we are so I can actually click on that and what it does is it works out the mathematics for you of the average of the range from B5 through to B9. So I'm going to click OK and it'll actually ask me the range of numbers that I want and I'm just going to click on OK. So here we've got our average range and it does actually again show that it is a sum so it has the equal sign, the word average and then the range. So we've got five numbers and the average number of chocolates consumed in that day is 5.4. Just going to save that file again and then I'm going to go and have a look at another useful item called round. Now rounding is if you're actually looking at your amount of money spent per day. So say for example I'm going to put in some numbers and I'm going to change the actual format of these to my actual currency which will be in UK pounds. So I'll just finish populating this. So I need a decimal place in that one so let's just somebody likes bounty bars and okay so what we've got here is our range of numbers and I'm just going to highlight those by I used a click and drag in this method and I want to go to my home thing and I'm going to go to my number format and I'm going to choose currency and as you can see it's automatically changed it to English now I'm actually going to use an average formula here to start and then I'm actually going to use the round formula. Now rounding means that I can round up or down the amount of money. So if I just go to my formulas bar, now I know that I recently used my average formula. So I click on average and I accept the range and click OK. So that's actually given me my average. Now. What I would like is my actual number here to be rounded. So I'm just going to go to my insert function. Now you'll notice in my most recently used, it's actually listed round. If you can't find it, again hit all and just scroll down the alphabetical list and find round. Okay, so I'm going to click round. 
and the number that I actually want to use is this one here so I'm going to click on B10 and it says round a number to a specific number of digits okay so I can actually specify whether it is two three four whatever so I'm going to put it as a zero so that it goes to the nearest number so if I now do that and you'll notice it has a sum and it's B10 with comma and then zero and if we see here it's actually averaging out our actual number to four so just click OK there and so the average amount of money per day is four pounds that we spend. I'm now going to look at commenting on cells. Now what I've done here is I've actually used a mathematical formula that allows me to calculate random numbers between 1 and 49. I just want to show you how to do it here. So um, with this I'm actually doing the National Lottery and I'm just going to click into cell B3 and I'm going to go to my recently used formulas and functions and you'll notice here we have random between so I'm going to choose that and it asks for you for the lowest number which is the bottom number and the top number so I'm going to put in 1 and then 11 in here and you'll notice it says equals volatile now that means that once you actually click into that cell and press enter a different answer will come up every time so we're going to click OK to accept it and if I just show you that how this will actually work and it feels like it Right, there we are. You have to actually double click on it to bring up the actual function and then press enter to actually get your answer. So it's actually quite a nifty little thing to be able to use if you want to try and randomly calculate your own lottery numbers. And there we go. So I can actually keep doing that and produce different numbers. So this is quite useful if you fancy having a go at doing it yourself rather than the National Lottery doing random numbers for you. Now I'm going to have a look at actually inserting a comment to explain how you actually use this. So we need to actually go to our review system. So we've got, we've got our review button here within the ribbon and you'll notice that we actually have this comments box and we're going to click on new comment right now the comment box is already populated with the name of my computer which is a Fujitsu we can actually get rid of that so I can put in how to use so the instructions would be double click on number cell and then press enter sorry about the French spelling there press enter to pick a random number Right, and all I need to do now is just press the enter key and that will I click out of that. Now you'll notice that we actually have a little red triangle up here in the top right hand corner right here. Now every time I roll over that my actual comment will come up. So we'll do the same thing again with this one. I'm going to put new in here. And again we put how to use
just going to click out of that <clears throat> and again what we have here as soon as I roll into either of these two boxes you can actually see the comments now you're probably wondering what a comment would be useful for if you're actually working with a group of people and you need to comment on a particular formula or something or on say a range of numbers that have come up with a rather odd answer then that is why you would use that so a useful little tool for you to utilize within your actual working formulas and things like that so what we've done is we've just had a look at some basic stuff for our actual spreadsheets and this is your introduction to it